Hey guys, it's Bob Morreale here with The Tuning School, and on today's Tech Tuesday, we're going to talk about a common fuel injector setting problem that causes you to remain way too rich at idle. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about one of the settings in the fuel injector data that usually causes a problem. So a lot of times guys are buying fuel injectors with no data or they're buying injectors with data and they're actually afraid to plug it in. Don't ask me why, I don't know. We just do this, we see this on tech support so we're starting to handle it more and more often. So let's just talk about the guys with no data. They'll buy big injectors, they'll have no data, they'll put in the flow rate and the next thing you know they're idling and they're trying to dial it in and they're rich as all get out. I know it's a scientific term, rich as all get out, but the problem is they're way too rich and they can't figure out how to fix it. So let's go ahead over now and take a look at the problem in the VSAM editor. All right guys, so the problem uh, that we're describing here is the minimum injector pulse width. So let's go find that. It's under engine, fuel, and then general. And then we're gonna scroll on down until we get down here to the minimum injector pulse. Okay, now the minimum injector pulse width technically should describe the injector's minimum ability to pulse. So what that means is the smallest amount that it can actually be pulsed and still maintain a good fuel droplet. So um, with a small fuel injector, uh, normally that can be fairly small because they put out fairly small droplets to begin with. But when you get a large fuel injector, what will happen is normally it's more difficult for that injector to make small droplets. However, that also creates a problem for us. So people that buy injectors that have no data are creating a problem for themselves because without good data, you really don't know what that injector could actually flow at the minimum. So we kind of have to take a stab at it and guess at it. Because if you don't kind of take a stab at it and guess at it, and if you just left this number, the same number that the small injectors had, you've created an artificial problem for yourself where at idle, the computer will be attempting to get you down to a stoichiometric air fuel or lambda one and it will not be able to because it'll run into this particular number so it's usually um, 1.2 milliseconds 1.5 in this case 1.7 um, so it'll come down to this number and with a large fuel injector the issue is 1.7 milliseconds is a lot of fuel and so it's more fuel than it needs to get you down to 14.7 air fuel so uh, let's go look over in the scan so you can actually see it in in progress here so Let's just uh, play it back. This uh, scan starts from the beginning, the car's not running yet. Once it cranks up, it's gonna be an open loop, and then it'll kick into closed loop, and I want you to pay attention to the O2 sensors here. So it's running now. And so they're gonna come up over 800 millivolts, and they're gonna hold. And what that means is we are richer than 14.7. So here they go. And at the same time, the short terms are gonna kick in because we've just gotten into closed loop and long terms are kicking in. So they go, holy cow, we are way too rich when you get to 14.7 air fuel. So it's pulling out fuel like crazy. So you'll see here. And in this case, the actual cumulative total is 42% on this bank. It's actually 42% on both banks. If you add bank one, uh, both long term and short term together, that'll tell you how far off it really is. So in this particular case, the problem is Although it wants to get uh, fuel out of it, it wants to lean it out, it cannot because it has this hard limit that is back from the minimum injector pulse width table of 1.7. So the solution to this problem is actually really simple. Uh, this minimum injector pulse width has to be driven down um, in order to allow the computer to do its job, to lean it out enough to get you down to your stoichiometric air fuel. And then you can do some real tuning to dial in these errors and fix these problems. So let's go back over here to the file and let's take a look at it. So we're here at the minimum injector pulse width. Now the obvious solution is put the correct injector data in. But I'm betting that since you don't have the correct injector data, you can't do anything with this. So you're going to have to take a guess at it. So usually, and we see this problem a lot with tech support tickets, uh, what you're going to find is uh, you have nothing you can really plug in and you're going to call and say, hey, I need something to plug in. So we always start pe people off at 0.350. Now, how do we come up with that number? Yeah, I know it says 0.352, but it's okay. Now, how do we come up with that number? Um, through years of experience, we have found that most injectors, even the big ones, can be driven down to that point without losing their ability to make a good fuel droplet. Um, and so if you have uh, this particular problem, we'd start you at this point and tell you to go ahead and retest it. 
and other injectors, maybe you've got some really huge injectors, you might have to go a little bit lower. And if that's the case, we'll normally put you back here, 0.150, which is the next step down. We normally don't ever go below this because it's really not feasible for any injector to be driven down lower than 0.15 milliseconds. I'm sure there's some injector somewhere on earth that can do it. However, most of the stuff that we find in students' vehicles, uh, shop vehicles, and the stuff you'd actually see is just not feasible. So I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this information, and I hope that it'll help you diagnose a uh, problem in the future. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something good today. And uh, for more high performance tuning knowledge, be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on social media. And as always, stay tuned.